Hi, good morning. It's uh, Thinking Slow Group. Um, I wanted to put out a, uh, a video about a bit of data that was uh, generated by the Office of National Statistics uh, a couple of days ago, uh, which is this uh, chart on the left. And I wanted to basically show you how and why that's extraordinarily misleading. Uh, and then this chart uh, on the right uh, is, is the real sort of picture and I'll explain how we got from one to the other. Uh, and I think more importantly, really, the bigger conclusion is that we now have to be very careful about the um, integrity of ONS. So I think we're becoming increasingly aware of the fact that uh, integrity is missing from most of our body politic at the moment. Uh, it's missing from the mainstream media. Uh, it's missing from BBC. And I think uh, ONS maybe was one of the last bastions of good behavior, integrity and honesty. And uh, that's a that's a presumption that I think is probably, uh, if, if not no longer valid, it's quite weak, basically. And I'll, I'll explain why that is. It's a very disappointing conclusion, but it's the only one uh, I can reach. So starting uh, with the story is this tweet, and it was retweeted by Nick Stripe, who I believe is an important player in these various uh, machinations. Uh, this is the tweet, and this is the chart that was uh, used to support that tweet, that um, the, uh, the, the risk of dying uh, from COVID-19 when you're unvaccinated is 32 times greater than people who are fully vaccinated. Uh, and that, crucially, this will depend very heavily on this number here, the 2nd of January. That is the only thing that drives this data uh, because of the choice of the start date. And I'll explain why that is. So if you move this start date, uh, which is a point in time when there were no vaccines, essentially, or more accurately, nobody had taken the vaccine, nobody in any scale, that is, um, once you move that date, this chart completely moves around. And I think they've deliberately chosen this in order to generate this. I think it's an act of dishonesty. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain why. So let's try without getting into a lot of um, detailed maths. And by the way, all of my workings have been po posted onto our website, including the spreadsheets. So anyone that really wants to do deep dives into numbers, uh, they're all there in the spreadsheet. I'm just going to walk through the sort of high level uh, logic here. So this is this is the smell test. Um, let's just try that figure of 32 times more likely without getting into a lot of very complex maths. So I'm rounding things up and down here just to make it simple. But basically, 20% of the population roughly are unvaccinated at the moment. Um, if you look at the chance of dying with COVID in any period, whatever it happens to be, a month, uh, two months, one week, we just call that P, basically. We don't know what it is. Um, for the unvaccinated, it's 32 times P. And then uh, we don't know what P is, but we can get rid of P and we end up with a ratio just by multiplying these things out. Uh, hopefully this makes sense for most people that uh, you will end up with a ratio of eight deaths uh, from COVID for every uh, un in the unvaccinated uh, group for every one death uh, from the vaccinated group. And that's just simple multiplication and then turning that into a ratio. So it should be eight to one. So almost all deaths, uh, if this 32 is correct, will be amongst the unvaccinated. Now, here is the actual data for weeks 38 to 41 from Public Health England. Uh, these are the COVID-19 deaths and the, the so-called linked deaths, which means they're allocated to either vaccinated or, or unvaccinated. And um, they're basically excluding a handful of deaths that cannot be linked back to their database. So these are the actual numbers. And I've, I've put the table in the presentation but it was 502 uh, COVID-19 deaths versus 2,224 for the vaccinated. So uh, roughly speaking, that works out about 20% um, of your COVID-19 deaths are unvaccinated and 80% are vaccinated. So that is a ratio of four 
vaccinated deaths to every one unvaccinated death. So completely the opposite of uh, what you would get by using this 32 times more likely tweet. Um, and it's actually reverse. It's much more likely um, that um, a, a COVID-19 death will be vaccinated. So this is completely wrong. The smell test has been failed right from the get-go and uh, I'll explain why why it's failed and where that 32 came from and why it's dishonest. Uh, this is a chart we've treated out quite a lot now but this is really the, the basis for that number of 32 and as I said to you the importance of that start date which was 2nd of January. This is the weekly COVID deaths um, which inevitably for a coronavirus uh, are peaking in uh, early January. It's, it's a seasonal phenomenon and you'll see all the deaths here. Now while those deaths are happening you're beginning to roll out the vaccine program and this is the percentage on, on this side of people in England who had had both doses. So you know round about here while this is ramped up you can see that number is basically you know more or less zero until the end of March. So what ONS has done is taken all of these deaths and just allocated them to uh, unvaccinated. And then that, that pushes up uh, the ratio that we saw on their tweet. So their tweet is basically total deaths, um, let's for the unvaccinated say, uh, divided by the number of person years, which is a kind of difficult number to, to sort of get your head around and that's converted into age standard um, uh, mortality rate. So if you start with the big number on top, which is the total number of deaths, if you call all of this here is by definition unvaccinated because basically nobody had been fully vaccinated at that point. So you start with a huge number on the top, you end up with a big, um, uh, a big rate in their tweet and then on the flip side, you, you end up with a small rate for vaccinated because these deaths are coming in the summer where you're at a seasonal low, uh, nearly zero. And then at this point in time, people are starting to be fully vaccinated. Uh, so you sort of do the opposite for the vaccinated numbers. Um, you, you basically have a very small number of, on top, which is deaths, you know, divided by quite a large number of person years. And then you actually further reduce that through age standardized mortality rate, which we may not need to get into. But this is really the crux of, of what they've done uh, just by choosing the start date of 2nd of January. Um, and I'm, I'm saying that was done uh, deliberately because the only thing that their table tells you is a lot of people died before the vaccine was available. Nothing else tells you absolutely nothing about the rel relative effectiveness, safety, or anything else. So anything else they've inferred uh, is inferred dishonestly and misleadingly. Um, so we can do another sense check on this. Uh, and this is a comparison of what proportion of people have been vaccinated, which is the uh, orange dotted line, and what proportion of COVID deaths are coming from the fully and partially vaccinated, which is this blue line. Now, if ONS is right uh, that there's 32 more, the 32 times more chance of dying from COVID as an as an unvaccinated person, you would expect the share of COVID deaths to fall uh, for the vaccinated to pretty low number, which means this blue line sort of going very quickly downwards, basically as the vaccine program rolls out. And you're not you're not seeing that happening. You're seeing actually the two lines moving in exact lockstep. So you know, as you as your percentage of uh, population getting vaccinated goes up, correspondingly, your percentage of COVID deaths amongst the fully and partially vaccinated goes up in uh, exact lockstep. Now, there's quite a few nuances about in certain age categories. You can see an advantage. Um, but then when you aggregate that at the population level, uh, you can get this kind of pattern because of differences in age. That, that, that's a fair comment. But I think uh, what you can certainly see from here is the kind of suggestion they were making again of 32 times more likely to die from um, if you're unvaccinated just doesn't hold out. So right here, you've got basically 80% of uh, COVID-19 deaths 
uh, amongst partially or fully vaccinated at the same time as 80% of your uh, population is fully or partially vaccinated. So there's, there's, no, there's no difference. It's certainly nothing like the 32-fold reduction in risk compared to the va uh, unvaccinated. So again, this blows a hole in, in the suggestions that they're making. So I just wanted to leave actually um, COVID-19 mortality and, and pick up where we left off with Professor Fenton, who explained very clearly, you know, why it's better to look at all cause mortality. Uh, and, and I don't want to go through that discussion again. Um, it's all there in the other video. And as I said, it's in the, in the spreadsheet workings as well. But this was his work on all cause mortality, uh, where he basically showed that um, the, uh, the, the all cause mortality rate for the uh, vaccinated and unvaccinated is, is roughly equal. And if anything, it's slightly higher in the vaccinated. And he's doing some more work now as the a new time series has come out, which will extend this uh, graph off in, into um, to the 24th of September. But let's just have a look at all cause mortality, because that is a much more important really as a statistic, because it avoids all the problems with allocating deaths between COVID and non-COVID. If you if you just look at all cause, then you, you can't go far wrong, basically. So this is um, this is then the numbers um, that ONS has used to generate that chart, basically. And as I said, because they run this from the 2nd of January, you end up with a very large number of deaths uh, from COVID-19 allocated to, well, actually a very large number uh, altogether allocated to the unvaccinated. Uh, and that includes all of those COVID deaths, essentially. That's why this is a high number. And uh, they, they, uh, they didn't publish this chart, but this also ends up with very high, um, uh, very high number of um, very high mortality rate for the unvaccinated uh, versus the second dose. So this is like a factor of three, basically. Uh, and this is the same logic that's in their in their tweet, but this is actually relating to all deaths instead of just COVID deaths. So that, that's the difference. But here you can see the impact then of moving to uh, week week 13, uh, which was the week ending of 2nd of April, uh, when you're actually starting to get a population of fully vaccinated. You know, it, it doesn't make sense to um, it doesn't make sense to compare when there really weren't any fully vaccinated people. Um, and then uh, this this is the picture that you then get, basically. Um, much lower number of deaths, lower number of population years, and you end up with a 798 figure here. Uh, and again, the spreadsheet's on my website if you, want to, if you want to look at where we got the details from. And on the double vaccinated, you're ending up with a, quite a sort of larger number, a comparable number of population years, and you end up with this number here on age standardized mortality rate, which is more or less speaking within or very close to the 798.8. So that's, um, that's an overview of the, the adjustments that were made and what happens when you move that start point to the week ending of 2nd of April. Uh, and I think this is a much fairer start point because it, it's actually starting from a point in time where the vaccine was available and rolled out rather than January, where essentially it was barely available. Uh, and then you sort of dishonestly allocate all deaths to unvaccinated. And that's the crux of what they've done, basically. And I, I don't think it's an accident, to be honest. But uh, these are the conversions and the details are on, on the website. Uh, and then this is where you end up, basically, you know, starting from there. Uh, tweet, this is where you end up from, uh, you could see on that table, these two numbers, 799, 735. Uh, this is a much more realistic way of looking uh, at this. This is all cause uh, mortality, uh, and it starts from week 13, so you actually have a population of, of vaccinated to compare to. And we see this as deliberately misleading uh, and very inaccurate. So that was it. I tried to um, put this quite quickly because um, all of the detailed workings are on the website for, for those that want to look at it. So this is just a high uh, overview of, of what the issue is. And, um, you know, for us, again, the real issue is um, 
uh, let's say that there's more and more uh, effort to keep the narrative uh, intact, basically. And that effort, unfortunately, is now pushing us further and further away from objective reality uh, into more and more misleading uh, sort of numbers and analysis. And uh, for for any any sort of censorship on this, I wanted to point out that uh, I'm actually just pointing out using the public health data and I'm just pointing out the uh, weakness in the analysis prepared by the statistics authority using the health data. So I'm not disputing the health data on, on the on the contrary, I'm actually using it. So the further we get pushed into this um, road, uh, more and more data has to be swept under the carpet, uh, manipulated, misrepresented, and that's a very dangerous place uh, to be. Uh, I think we all kind of understand what sort of countries have a statistics authority that, uh, uh, let's say, massages to be, you know, to be charitable, massages statistics. Uh, that, that is a very dangerous uh, place to be in and a road to go down. And unfortunately, that is where we are. If, if we're used to the idea that um, the media is no longer objective, if we're used to the idea that the politicians uh, are only occasionally telling the truth, um, we, we need now to get used to the idea that the ONS is no longer a sort of citadel of fairness, objectivity uh, and rationality. It's now becoming politicized and I believe it's being pressured to uh, produce tweets like that because they support whatever kind of objectives the political leadership has at any one time and that's a, that's a huge shame and it's something people should be aware of and just be careful uh, with, with that kind of analysis because it's inevitable that will have been massively retweeted it'll be reported verbatim by all major newspapers without any real analysis of how that's possible uh, to have 32 times uh, more probability of dying from COVID if you're unvaccinated than vaccinated uh, at the same time as 80% of your COVID deaths are uh, amongst the vaccinated. I mean, it clearly, those, uh, those facts don't reconcile. I think that was clear from the smell test. And, uh, you know, I've explained why those facts don't reconcile and my position is that they deliberately and misleadingly chose to run that time series from 2nd of January at a time where there was no mass vaccination to speak of. And that's the only thing uh, that drove those statistics. So they're artificial and misleading and just something you should know about. So hope, hopefully you found that interesting. If that is interesting, please um, please like this uh, short presentation and subscribe to the channel. Uh, later on, I think at the weekend, we're gonna do a deep dive into uh, excess deaths and heart disease, um, and also speaking to a frontline doctor about that. That's gonna be quite interesting, I would imagine. So um, look out for that. And uh, as, I, as I always finish up, you know, uh, stay, stay free, because staying free is a lot more important than staying safe. And without your freedom, you don't have safety. So I think for all of us here, it's uh, it's important to stay free. OK, thank you very much. Goodbye. And uh, also, just as a short uh, afterthought, uh, if anyone's interested in the data, uh, all of the workings are on the website. And these are the links to the official um, uh, Public Health England data that we've been relying on and also to the underlying uh, data set from ONS. Thank you.